This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video, I'm gonna bring you the deep cervical flexor endurance test. Now, I use this test in my assessments to replace those manual muscle tests we would do for underactive structures and those with cervical dysfunction. I think you'll find the traditional manual muscle tests focus on muscles that we presume or theorize to become overactive or synergistically dominant in those with movement impairment and cervical dysfunction. So I'm gonna have my friend Melissa come out. She's gonna help me demonstrate this test, which is quite a challenging test. It is a test we have a lot of research on. It's fairly well standardized. Notice that Melissa starts in a hook lying prone position so her legs aren't straight and her hands are on her stomach, which is gonna help standardize the position of her shoulders and scapula. From here, what I wanna do is I wanna tuck Melissa's chin and then I'm gonna raise her head off the table two and a half centimeters and the way I'm gonna standardize that is it's gonna be the width of my index and third finger, second and third finger, just behind the most posterior portion of her occiput. All right, so she can just go ahead and relax there for a second. Now what I'm gonna do from here is cue her to tuck her chin as far as she can and lift her head up just far enough so she can feel, but not squish my fingers. Good, and once she's there, go ahead and relax for a second. Once she's there, I'm gonna time her and look for one of a few dysfunctions to happen. Once those dysfunctions happen, of course, the time is over. Those very few dysfunctions are, does she lose her chin tuck? And the way I can tell by that is does she lose these lines right here? This is the double chin test. I think you'll find that your clients hate this test because it makes them do a double chin. All right, so she has these lines here. If she loses those, I know she lost a chin tuck. If when she raises her head, she then loses that head elevation, right? Loses that flexion of the cervical spine and crushes my fingers, test over. If she does the opposite. So I have her in this chin tucked position and she starts going into that forward head. Good sign that she's very synergistically dominant in these muscles here. Then, I, then the test is over. So we got those three signs right off the bat and a fourth sign being she just doesn't want to continue with the test. Maybe she feels fatigued and, and she, she just doesn't like how it makes her neck feel. That's also the end of the test. So there's four standardized signs. We got the loss of these lines in the chin tuck, increase of pressure on my fingers, decrease in pressure on my fingers, or her not wanting to go further with the test. That would be the end of the time. The other thing we can do that is not standardized is get a little additional information for my manual therapists out there is have her chin tuck have her raise her head into flexion here, just, just barely off my fingers so she can just feel it. Then I can use my other hand to palpate some of these muscles. We do have good research that shows the sternocleidomastoid is often very overactive in those with cervical dysfunction. We could try to palpate the scalenes here. Are, are her anterior and middle scalenes very overactive? What about her levator scapulae? This might just give us a little in additional information on some stuff we can do during our mobility portion or release portion of our intervention to help with cervical function before we start doing these deep cervical flexor activation exercises. Now, you got those signs. How long she should be able to hold this perfectly? Minimum of 30 seconds. If we're just gonna build some general guidelines less than 30 seconds, I'm definitely gonna call weak. Regardless of what the population is, less than 30 seconds, the individual needs to work on their deep cervical flexor endurance. 30 to 60 seconds, probably sufficient for a normal, not active, fairly sedentary population. So maybe that's our first goal is just to get to 30 to 60 seconds. 60 seconds plus, very good for a sedentary population, but probably insufficient for an active population who may need to go 90 seconds, maybe even two minutes. You think of the amount of force that's put on somebody's cervical spine during sporting activity and the fact that a play generally lasts longer than 60 to 90 seconds, we're gonna need to take them a little longer. So, 
take you guys through this test. You're going to go flexion and then up on the fingers. Have Melissa raise her head, keeping that chin tuck, a monitoring chin tuck, finger pressure. Melissa's already lost pressure. That would be the end of the test at roughly 10 seconds as I monitor the clock behind me. There you guys go, another test you can add to your arsenal. You're going to probably want to start with a postural or movement assessment, then move on to these more specific assessments to see if isolated activation techniques are necessary. I hope you guys enjoy using this test and it refines your intervention so that you guys can decrease dysfunction and improve performance. Thank you.